Uh, hello, this is a note about uh, one of our exercises in our workbook. Uh, no, actually, this is a quiz in our online course, Coastal Nav course. Inland Quiz 06, question 7 is a, is a question on um, um, danger bearings, danger bearings. And so, and uh, you can work this on a paper chart, probably easier than on electronic chart. In this case, simple, danger bearing, very simple operation, easy to measure and set up, but a uh, little more to do with an with, with e-chart, but it's nice to know you can do it on the e-chart and, um, and it'll come in handy. And so, uh, let, but first let's do this. I'm using OpenCPN here. And the first thing, you, we got a couple things to set up. Normally we run these often in, true bearings but here we do want to set up to view mag magnetic bearings and I think I've set that up but we have to be careful there's a very nice plug-in called the world magnetic model this plug-in right here and this plug-in is uh, w w everybody should have this however we don't want to use it now this is telling us you know if I click this this is going to tell me the accurate very very accurate variation anywhere on the world that I put my cursor this is at the boat this is at the cursor but we don't want the accurate variation now now, we want the variation back in 1990 or something when this training chart was made. So we have to go into the settings and go into the plugins and then go to this world magnetic model here and disable it. Okay, and apply. So that's disabled. While we're in here, let's go to the d display and then go to units. And then here's where we want to see here you can show true bearings and you can show magnetic bearings. Or and or you can turn them both on and you can see what that looks like later on. I'm not going to do it now. However, we recommend that you choose don't show both. It's a, some people consider a very nice feature that you can see both. In, inevitably, inevitably, it'll lead to making a mistake, even though they're clearly marked. So I would say if you're going to use magnetic bearings, check that one, uncheck that one, and then uh, show magnetic bearings. Uh, we want to do magnetic bearings, but look. I closed that plug-in down already, and it won't let me enter this, right? So if I say apply, yeah, so it's not letting me do that. Let me just see if I come back in here once. These are just the nuances of this, of, a pro, of this program. Ah, now it lets me do it. Perfect. So if you have to, close it, open it. If you have to, really have to, close the program, open the program. Anyway, so here we go, and 20 is right. We want 20 degrees east. That's a plus here because that's what, uh, that's what we say for our workbook. We want all variation 20 degrees east. So now we're set up here. Well, let's just say apply and then say okay. But now let's, let's not rest on that alone. Let's go down to this compass rose and be sure things are right. So here I'm, now I've got a compass rose. Here, see, they say the variation is 19 degrees 45 in 1998. That must be 98, the chart. Uh, we don't care. We're calling this 20. It varies across this chart by about 30 minutes, 30 arc minutes. But here I'm going to hit the M key to make a, I'm going to draw, draw here, and then I'm going to go right straight. Well, let me go over here. 270 magnetic. And what's that say? 274 magnetic. 240. 243 magnetic. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay. That's that's fine. Remember, we're not using exactly what this chart is. We're going to be using 20. So my con my concept here of this test is not not that good in this case. Uh, okay, so that's okay. We're using 20 degrees. We're going to use 20 degrees. All right. So our problem is that we're located. I'll go over the problem. We're at the, we're, it says that we're about a half mile south of this buoy here. We're going this way, across Harrow Straits, and we want to go basically into this bay, and we're going through this channel, we're going to this bay. And then we get a notice from the Coast Guard that this buoy is off station, not in the right place. So we, and it's night, and so we can't count on uh, this protecting us from this reef here, this reef and rocks and so forth. These are rocks of wash, these are rocks that are always underwater. But it's generally, uh, th there's also, if you look close around here, there's dots around here. These little dots around this area mean that's a generally a dangerous area. So we want to stay away from that area. And so the idea is, we're down here somewhere, and the idea is, and it tells us, use this light for a danger bearing line. So what we could do is, let me do this, 
and draw. Oh, okay, that went away, but I got my route. I'm, I'm, I'm on a route tool now, so I'm going to start here. And you see, here's a route. We don't want to go below this route, right? Let's say, now that's that. And I'm going to say escape. Okay, so now, and I'm going to reverse that. I'm going to reverse that here. So there, uh, yes, whatever. Okay. So there, now that's not much of a safety margin. It, you know, it's a, but let's start with that. And then later you may want to say, let me bounce that up to here a little bit, right? But this is a safety margin. I do not want, as I'm sailing, as I'm sailing, motoring, or going from here to here, I do not want to be below this line when I'm over, you know, in this area. I, so I want to use, so I look at that. What's that say? That's a bearing. That says bearing 257 magnetic. And now we have to assume that our hand bearing compass, that our hand bearing compass is working correctly from our position on the boat. We have in the textbook many ways you can test that, that you can test that where you're standing on the boat, that the hand bearing compass works right. That's going to be very difficult to do on a power boat, but on a sailboat, it usually will work, but you do have to test it, and then you follow the instructions uh, in the book that makes you, uh, makes, uh, that assures you that the bearings you're taking with a hand bearing compass is right, not being disturbed by rigging or whatever. And so we are assuming the hand bearing compass is right. So we, so we head off in this direction, and then we, this is a bearing we don't want to be, uh, we don't want to be below this line, and this bearing is 257. So if you go up here, that's 257. Now these are going to be, these are going to be uh, lower numbers up here, right? So if I go up here like M and look here, you see up here, that's 242. So that's fine. Uh, and then, um, but if I'm down below this line, if I'm down below this line, you see, now that's 261, right? So the, the guideline we have for the danger bearing is we say not more than NMT. So we write down, we want that bearing to never be bigger than 257 on the compass. And again, you would probably maybe, uh, if you, you know, crank it up to here, and what's that number now? That's 255, right? That gives us a little bit of freedom right in here. But something like 255, 250M, 257, to two, let's say 255. When you're driving there and your boat's coming in here, you want to watch that light bearing, and you and if that bearing starts getting bigger, that means you've been drifted down into here, and you got to then head up, turn up, and go up that way. So that's the way that problem works, and that's the concept of a danger bearing, and a couple notes about some um, use of OpenCPN for this.